It may not look like much now, but in those fields behind me, there used to be a quarry. And in the early 1800s, in that quarry, they made a fantastic discovery that will change our understanding of the Earth's history. The very first dinosaur. In his 1677 book, The Natural History of Oxfordshire, Robert Plott drew the first illustration of what turns out to be a dinosaur bone. Now, he didn't actually know really what it was. First, he thought it was the end of a thigh bone from an elephant brought over by the Romans. And that was the prevailing idea for it for, for centuries. And it did get nicknamed the Scrotum Humanum. Can't imagine why. Now, in the early 1800s, geology itself was a very young science, and a lot of naturalists were using the Old Testament and the story of Genesis as the basis for their understanding of the history of the Earth. Now, all this had started to change in the late 1700s, particularly with the work of a guy called Georges Cuvier from France who made the fantastic discovery that species will actually go extinct and he did this by comparing fossils of mastodon and modern elephants and the realization that although they were similar animals there was nothing quite like the mastodon anywhere else in the world anymore and this helped develop that concept of extinction now this really kind of took a took the next step with the discovery of large reptiles so this rather spectacular jawbone was acquired by Christopher Peggy in 1797 for the princely sum of 10 shillings and sixpence. And here just south of Stonesfield in Oxfordshire in 1815, the workmen at the quarry discovered more bones. Now the fossils found in this field eventually made their way to the reader of mineralogy at Oxford University, William Buckland. And William Buckland for a long time couldn't figure out what these animals were. He knew there was something large, but he didn't know what it was. And it was when Georges Cuvier came over in 1818 that he had a look at the animal and realised that it was a large reptile. And he estimated it to be somewhere around 12 metres long. Now, some of the things that hinted to Cuvier that this was a reptile was the way the teeth were formed. And you have a look at this replica as, as I'm handling it. Now Cuvier realised that the way the teeth were growing out of the bone was a feature that was characteristically reptilian. So it couldn't be anything, any other kind of animal. Now at first Buckland didn't want to publish his results because the man was actually full title is Reverend Dr Buckland and he found the concept of an extinct large reptile particularly hard to reconcile with his beliefs in the Old Testament. Now eventually he did publish his findings once he heard rumours that another large reptile had been found in Sussex and he didn't want somebody else to gain the credit. So in the Geological Society of London on the 20th of February 1824 he announced his findings to the world as Megalosaurus, the great lizard. So what kind of creature was Megalosaurus? Well at first it was thought that it dragged its belly along the ground with its legs splayed out, kind of like a modern crocodile or a lizard does today. However it was the anatomist Richard Owen upon examining the hip joint of Megalosaurus who realised that the legs were directly underneath the body in the same way that mammals have. So this meant that this creature was standing with straight legs. And for the reopening of the Crystal Palace in 1854, Richard Owen actually commissioned a number of statues of not just Megalosaurus but a number of other prehistoric animals to be put on display. And there's a very famous banquet that took place inside one of these statues, one of the things, the Iguanodon. As it turned out, this image of a four-legged Megalosaurus was already in doubt at the time that this banquet took place. Owen just didn't want to admit it. And there had been evidence from the discovery of some other dinosaurs, but also from the discovery of dinosaur trackways in both Oxfordshire and in the United States. Now these fossil trackways showed that it was actually a two-legged animal, not a four-legged one, along with other fossil finds that showed that animals similar to Megalosaurus actually stood erect on two legs. Now this led to the creation of 
a more kangaroo-like posture that is often quite familiar to a lot of people. So our understanding of Megalosaurus today has changed. It's no longer seen as a quadrupedal predator as it was originally, nor as the kangaroo-like posture of a bipedal organism. Our discoveries of other theropods have shown that they had a much more horizontal posture but we're still bipedal. So in the case of Megalosaurus, you're talking about an animal that's maybe eight to nine meters long and about two, two and a half meters tall. It's lived during the middle of the Jurassic period, about 166 million years ago, during a time when Europe was a series of islands surrounded by warm, shallow sea. We know this from the remains of limestones and sandstones throughout much of Europe, that the, this was the kind of environment that we had. So Megalosaurus is part of a suborder of dinosaurs called the theropods. Now the theropods are predominantly bipedal meat-eating dinosaurs, creatures like Tyrannosaurus rex, for example, are theropods. In the case of Megalosaurus, it is part of a clade called the Tetanuria, basically means stiff tail, and it is part of a family called the Megalosauridae. Side note with Megalosaurus as well, is that for a long time it became what's referred to as a wastebasket taxon. Now, in the case of wastebasket taxon, what that means is that a lot of dinosaurs that couldn't quite be described because of maybe of poor remains were lumped in as it's a megalosaurus. And the reality is that a lot of this, to some extent, lazy paleontology took several decades to clear up. In fact, all of these species here at one point were labelled as megalosaurus. See the remains of the megalosaurus that was found in these fields in Oxford University's Natural History Museum. Now what they found was the jaw, part of the front of the skull, along with the hip, part of the legs and some of the vertebra. Now we managed to flesh out megalosaurus by finding some other similar species including things like Eustreptospondylus to give us a much more rounded idea of what megalosaurus looked like. Now, Megalosaurus may not be as famous as Tyrannosaurus rex, it might not have been as large as Brontosaurus, or as powerful as Stegosaurus, but it holds a particular place, a special place within paleontology, as the world's first discovered dinosaur.